What's up guys, welcome to the garage. Uh, today we've got a little video um, just talking about some basic weathering. I'm gonna do a similar format to my uh, basic soldering. I am definitely no professional at weathering. There is some people out there that do some really awesome work um, with weathering this sort of stuff. Whereas I like to do just some basic stuff, just give it a little bit of character. And in, and in this video, I'm gonna show you what I do and the techniques I use to get a decent look on the truck. Now, those uh, for my WPL fans are getting a little bit excited about this truck. Uh, there will be a video of this coming very soon, or if you're watching this weathering video um, a week or two down the road, definitely this video will be up. This is a B36 from WPL, and I'm running a um, twin 370 a setup in it so this thing has probably got the most torque out of any WPO out there I can imagine probably uh, and in my own little style but we're weathering it today I thought rather than just doing it and then getting everyone commenting on uh, what I've done and how how good it looks I thought I'd show you as we do it so what I like to do when I weather my stuff I like to build pretty much the whole thing first and then do the weathering afterwards rather than um, doing it in separate parts. Some people I think like to do all the separate bits first and put it together, whereas I think you get a more natural look uh, if you weather something when it's all complete because that's how it would weather in real time anyway, isn't it? So we're gonna get that going. So, so what sort of stuff do I use? Well, your basic stuff is you just need a selection of brushes. I usually nick these off my wife and um, she does a lot of painting and stuff like that so and she doesn't watch these videos I don't think so she won't know that I've nicked them she's got hundreds of them so some selection of brushes a few empty tubs if you uh, for your paints and stuff like that and you're mixing I use airbrush thinners to thin out uh, or to make some of the powders up that's my choice I'm sure any other thinners will do whereas this seems to work quite well and isn't too aggressive on the paint that's already on the truck. And then my chosen two weathering powders are this. Um, this is a rust. This is a rust one from Humbrol. I've got a uh, dark earth one. And then I use just a selection of uh, these little cheap paints. These are really cheap. I've got a. This is a dark rust one. I don't often use that, it's a bit too dark for some of the stuff I do, but you can mix that and line it up a bit. Uh, I've got an orange brown, which I do often use mixed with the um, rust powder as well, it gives a good effect. If you're doing any sand and stuff like that, you've got this, uh, this Tamiya, uh, this one's called Desert Yellow. And then more recently I got hold of this little uh, Tamiya kit, it's a weathering master kit. Quite a handy little thing, they're not like... They're not too expensive and um, they're certainly not like dirt cheap but uh, this is quite handy just for the finer details and for the way I do stuff you need just a bit of like kitchen roll or a bit of paper towel or something like that uh, and I'll show you why I use that in a minute so getting started the first thing I do before I do anything with the paints and stuff is I make a little wash up with um, I usually put a little bit of dark earth in when I say a little bit, it's kind of just to just tap it a bit and uh, have a guess of how much I need. And I find mixing a little bit of the uh, the rust also helps, just to get the right sort of colour that you want. Mix that with a bit of uh, airbrush thinners. Again, I just guess, and then get a big brush. And just mix it in till you get, I don't know, what would you call it? Just some muddy, like a bit of muddy water that you'd find maybe um, in a puddle. And it is really simple what you do just to get that, that initial look. All I do, dab the brush in, choose a panel or a selection of panels. Don't do too many at once though because uh, it might dry a bit too quick. And you literally brush it all over and get all the areas covered. 
The good thing about weathering is sometimes the more mistakes you make or the more rough you are with it, the better it actually looks. So give it a good going over. Just like that. And then Then all you're going to do is get a bit of kitchen roll, a bit of paper towel. Uh, it's important not to rub at this bit, just, just tap it or just dab it lightly over, all over the bits you've covered. And then once you've done that, you can sort of start rubbing it a little bit. It's important to be really gentle with this. I know it looks like I'm not, but don't go too aggressive because you'll just rub it all off. And then that gives you that initial kind of dirty um, look. It's not quite apparent on this truck because it's red, but it will give you uh, a nice look all over it. And then you just do the same all over on all the panels, uh, making sure you don't do too much at once because if you leave it too long, it will dry on and then you'll struggle to get it off. So. Do make sure that you leave it a couple of seconds, give it time to um, like stick a little bit. If you've got a matte paint, which this is, it does stick on there, would um, adhere to it uh, quite a bit better. So that was both the doors done. Dab it off. And then that's the main cab done. And I mean, that took, what, a minute, two minutes to get that done. Uh, I know you probably can't see it too well on this camera, but uh, once we finish, I'll give you a good look over it and you'll see the finished uh, truck. Anyway, I'm gonna do the rest of the truck uh, exactly the same way. And then we'll come back and I'll show you the uh, the next step. So once you've covered the um, all the bits you want to cover, it's then time to start adding all the little finer details. Uh, and for that, you need a slightly smaller brush. Again, get yourself a little tub. And what I do now is I add some of the rust uh, powder. Tiny bit of the dark earth, only a small amount, no, probably a quarter of the rust. And then I add the orange brown into the, uh, into the tub, mix it up a little bit. You can see how much I've added in there. Not too much. Mix it in. That's gone quite thick, so I'll add a tiny bit of thinners to that. Or you can add a bit more paint, but thinners has a better effect. Just add a few drops at a time until you get the consistency you want. And what you want is a what you want is a sort of thick, lumpy um, paint. That's what I find anyway. And then this is the bit where you've got to have a think and look at the look at whatever you're um, weathering and just have a look around it and kind of imagine in your head what areas uh, you think are going to rust. Now, for me, after looking at all loads of uh, trucks and weathered stuff, I know that around sort of panels like the leading edge and the trailing edge of the uh, the bonnet or the hood as you call it uh, around headlights uh, around windows bottoms of doors and little bits um just around the bottom of the arches and stuff like that that's kind of areas that are going to suffer a little bit of rust and all i do i apologize because i'm left-handed so i might end up um getting in the way of the camera but all i do just little bits just go around just add a few little areas 
don't go too crazy you'll be amazed at how much uh, the effect a little bit of paint can have on the overall look so literally just go around and dab a couple of millimeters on here and there and it will soon um, start coming to life i promise you i'm going right-handed now for you guys ambidextrous look at this the other good thing about weathering is if you've made any mistakes on your paint job which i always do you can cover them up just by rusting them out Door hinges, never forget your door hinges, they always go rusty. So I'm gonna now just go over this and go over all the little bits that I think um, need to have a bit of rust on and then we'll come back and I'll show you step three. Right, so that's pretty much it. And as you can see, I'll try and get a good shot for you. I've not really added much on there at all. So the next step is to try and make that rust a little bit more authentic. So get your rust powder out again. Add a little dab into the middle of the pot you've already used. You can use the same pot again. It's not going to uh, be an issue. Get a slightly smaller brush, or that's what I do anyway. Get hold of some of that powder you've just put in uh, on the brush, so you end up so you end up with a little bit on the brush like that, and then again, just go around and just work it in. You can brush it on a little bit; it will, some will come off. Um, but some's going to stay on there as well because it's going to have a little bit of paint on it and the paint on the truck is still going to be a little bit wet. So go around and just get all the areas that you've just done or as much as you can, dab it on. It just adds a bit of texture to the work. Um, makes it a little bit more authentic, or it does in my uh, opinion anyway. Once you're happy with that, this now comes to uh, I want to say the final stage but there's loads of others there's loads more you can do uh, and i make another wash or i use the uh, previous one like the the muddy water that i said and put some rust in there add a bit more thinners if you need to you can see i'm making this up as i go along now can't you um, which I always do, add a bit of uh, orange brown. Not one of my trucks has had the same um, amount of weathering or the same style of weathering. Uh, but I think it's good to make it, make it up as you go along because it just gives it a bit of, uh, just makes it a bit more unique. And then this time, the wash is a little bit lighter, a little bit more orangey, as you can see. Um, and then this sometimes works perfectly and sometimes it, it's a bit rubbish but get the brush wet and just hold it on any of the uh, panel gaps just to get a drip on it don't paint it on you're literally getting a drip between the panel gaps like there's a nice gap there that can go over um, I always do these bits on the arches because it runs down uh, nicely, gives a good effect. Little bits on the windows here just so they run down a bit. 
And again, just do that in a few little places. Uh, do it where there's gaps in the panels or like the windows because it will run down a bit just to give it a bit more of a natural flow. Do it again on this side. What some people do is they make this wash darker and you can put the dark wash on and it gives it a um, sort of an old look as if it's been dumped under a tree for a while. Um, and that's really all the basic stuff I do. And then I'll spend a little bit of time with a little bit of thinners, a little bit of thinners on um, a bit of cloth or um, a bit of paper towel. And any bits you're not sure on or you're not too keen on, rub it lightly over um, and a lot of the time it will come off uh, and quite often if you uh, do it right you can actually make it look a little bit better as I said earlier um, making mistakes when you're weathering stuff is sometimes a good way of making it uh, look more natural so I've gone a little bit heavy handed on some bits so I'm just wiping it off And I'm pretty happy with that. And a lot of time it's just about trial and error and seeing what works and what doesn't. I'm not going to do it on this truck because I'm going and planning on doing a bit of mud running so it'll naturally get um, some weathering underneath. But I have done in the past uh, underneath, do the same technique, rubbing the uh, the dark wash and stuff onto the chassis and then rubbing it off. And the same, you can do it around the wheels. I'm going to keep these clean on this one because I think once it's been run a couple of times, it will get a nice uh, natural weathering look. And I, I clean the important parts, uh, but I leave some of it um, untouched so that it does actually give it a more natural look so um, other than that I'm probably going to put a few mud splatters up the side that's pretty easy to do get a dark brown this is the um, the rust one it's actually a bit too dark for rust but it gives a good kind of muddy look you need a, a quite I use a toothbrush a lot of the time but I haven't got one at the moment so I'm going to use this brush Mix it in, you need it quite watery this time, so let's add a bit of the, mix them together. Get a nice, um, nice amount on the brush, and then it's easier with a toothbrush, because then what you can do is, I'll show, try and show you this on the camera, hold it around where the wheels are gonna spin, and just flick it. Like that, hope you can see what I'm doing there. So, um, let's try and get a better angle for you. So I'm just flicking around where the wheel would go. Flick it like that. And you end up making a mess, that's what you end up doing. But you can see on the door, see you've got a bit of a uh, sort of a mud splattering effect there. Do the same on the other side. I always turn the wheel because you can kind of see a better angle of how it's going to um, spray. So hold it right there. I need to get a bit more on that. Flick it. Cover everything around you <laughs> in paint. Um, and then, as you can see, a nice mud splat effect on there. What you can do with the uh, residual stuff left on this brush, very lightly, and I mean literally just touch the front, give it a bit of a rub like that, just really lightly along the leading edges. And I find it gives it a nice, and you can do it on the leading edge of the reef as well. Wipe clean the uh, wipe clean the brush and then go over it again really lightly and 
And you end up with quite a good, let's just get it in the right light. Kind of the effect as if the truck's been moving forward uh, and hitting the mud and stuff where it's going over the bonnet and the same on the roof. I could do probably a little bit better on that roof. It's, it doesn't quite look as uh, natural as I want. And like I said before, if you're not happy with it, dab a bit of uh, paper towel with some thinners and most of it will go away and it'll leave you the nice worn effect that you want. That's all I'm gonna do for this video. I know it's dragged on a bit, but you can't rush these things. Hopefully that gives you a little, uh, a few tips on uh, weathering and just some basic techniques. And if you've got anything out of this video, you'll see that weathering something is just about trial and error. Mix some stuff up, get the right colors, try it if you don't like it, rub it off and just keep trying stuff. The more you practice doing it, you'll be able to quickly weather stuff up like this uh, without it taking loads of time. Loads of people out there that um, are way better at me and proper weathering that looks like really realistic. I like to just give it a nice uh, natural look, make it look pretty, uh, make it look a bit more real uh, and that gives these a lot more character. Anyway, this is coming soon to the channel and I don't think you're going to be disappointed in it. Um, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.